Welcome back to the worm, everyone. We've had, uh, this fall, we had a couple, three weeks of fantastic weather, like perfect. And now we're over a week into solid rain. I don't know, it's just kind of gross. Everything, it's 100% humidity and everything of mine's starting to mildew. So I got a couple projects I want to do. Hopefully they're not going to be too big a deal and I've got to get them done today because tomorrow we're right back into the rain. Of course, I'll do it after I have my breakfast of fried eggs and uh, blueberry pie. <laughs> one of my favorite breakfasts. So one thing I need to do is my big orange tent. I use that as long as I can all year because it's the only tent I have that I can actually sit in. So when I edit videos, I sit in there. My battery's hooked up and everything. And as it gets colder before it snows, I continue to use that. And when I wake up in the morning, you know, when it's like 40 or the high 30s, I got a little uh, propane heater. I like to put inside the tent so before I get up I always wake up and I'm freezing cold like I sleep great all night but then in the morning I'm just shivering so I like to turn that thing on although the actual tent itself is bug net and then the vestibule is all open so I want to make some kind of cover to put over the uh, bug net that'll hold that heat in last uh, actually yeah it was just last winter I had a sheet that I kind of like pushed up over the bug net part and I could drop down over the door in the morning or in the evening like if I want to read when I go to bed and it's 38 degrees, you know, my hands freeze in there. You can't really do anything. So I'm thinking I got my sewing machines here. I'm gonna get them out. I guess I should crack the eggs, huh? I'm gonna burn the pan. So I got an old ugly sheet from uh, the Goodwill or some thrift shop. I'm gonna chop that up, see if I can use it, kind of pattern it and then sew that up and I'll have a cover that I can either snap on or Velcro on or something to hold the heat in there. Then the other thing I need to do, we'll see if I actually get to it. My new solar panels really need a good cover. So I brought some Sunbrella here, that real nice waterproof, heavy fabric. Pretty soon the solar panels aren't gonna really do anything because it's getting too late in the year. Next year, when I figure out exactly where I want the two sets of panels, I'll cut some trees and make a bigger hole in the canopy to get some sunlight in here. But they're hardly doing anything now, so pretty quick I'll just have to put them away for the winter. I do, until then, I want to have a cover on them, and next summer, next spring when I can get them out and put them out there, I'll have a cover for whenever it rains. Oh man, this is so exciting. All right, pie and eggs. I'll be back with you in a sec. Ugh, dang. <laughs> I got two different sewing machines that I use and there's really not much crossover in them so I think I'm going to do all my heavy sewing first like this uh, holster that's ripped maybe the solar panel cover I'll do all that on one machine put it all away then get out the uh, small machine and do this lightweight stuff that's incredibly handy to have out here if all I had was a stationary one like a something that wasn't portable wouldn't really be able to use it out here so it's pretty sweet to be able to lug it out here and now hopefully run it off the uh, lithium battery from the solar generator we'll see I think I got this guy charged up yep 100% all right we got 100% turned on <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> Interestingly, it doesn't have very much horsepower. I wonder if it's because this thing's uh, down at like 38 or 40 degrees. Oh yeah, it's like a, it's like a refrigerator in here. <laughs> Tighter, but that works. All right, we're in business. I'm trying to find a little bit of stitching here I can do without looking at it because I want to see how much power this sewing machine takes. I saw 95 watts. Interesting. You kind of have no idea, you know? You just plug it into the wall and it works. Let's see, 
I just built this, so I should probably remember the size of it, but I don't. 99 by 91, and then uh, maybe we'll wrap it around the edge uh, a couple inches or so, maybe three inches. Put some snaps, just in case anybody's interested. I don't know if you guys know how to use a sewing machine or make anything with fabric. I think it's super fun. It's just as fun to build with fabric as anything else. So this is going to be... Uh, the square is, what do we say, 99 by 91, and then you have to leave a seam allowance all the way around the outside for this heavy fabric. I do a half an inch, so it'll be like an extra half an inch all the way around, so it'll end up being 100 inches by 92, and then I'm going to do a 3 inch strip all the way around the outside, so it's going to be like this which would be, what, almost 400 inches long strip that I need. So if that's three, and then I'll put snaps right in that into the side of the frame, but if you do that, it's nice to have this double thickness. So I'll put another two inches on here, that'll fold up the back side of it, and then you need a seam there as well, and then you need a seam there. So three, two, one half, one half. So this is gonna be a six, six inch strips. So make a bunch of those out of scrap probably after I cut this out with whatever's left over. It'd be nice if the table was a little wider. Someday maybe I'll have a big floor to do this on. got for scraps they don't quite match I think uh, there was a year in there where they changed the color of the fabric by one unit of blue but like this stuff I'll cut this up instead of cutting it out of a good piece as long as it's yep these are almost perfectly cut take all those side strips out of this stuff yeah I'll get me halfway around anyway Need a bigger table. Gotta scroll it up to fit it through there. Man, I am out of practice. I can't believe I just sewed this whole uh, strip on all the way around here without making the other hems first. Got a strip that's this wide and what is it, like 400 inches long. You gotta make uh, two stitches in it. And you can just hold it and zip it through the machine without stopping. Unless you put it all on here first. And then it's a pain in the butt to mark these and fold them and everything. Oh well. Just check the weather, it's supposed to be uh, 32 degrees tonight. I'm not sure I like that. The cold's nice, it's great to not have the bugs, but... I don't know, once my water tank freezes, my drinking water starts freezing and stuff, I think I'll have a couple more weeks before that happens, but... It's kind of on my mind that that change is coming. Once it happens, like a week or two after it happens, you just get used to it. Like having to melt your drinking water every day and... I mean, I don't have to spend money on ice anymore. You know, you end up putting hand warmers in the coolers instead of ice. That's kind of nice. And the snow's great, but just takes a little bit to settle into that, you know. So, I really want to get this finished now, and I want to get that heat cover on my tent. So I can try it out uh, tomorrow morning when I wake up. This morning I'm listening to uh, the audiobook I Contain Multitudes. It's been on hold for like two months at the the audio library, however the heck that works, and I finally got it all about microbes. So 
So this is the seam that'll be, this will get folded here, get folded like this and sewed. And then this goes on the outside. So there's the three inches and that'll get snaps in it. This is the top. Got to switch out my uh, normal everyday headphones for my sewing headphones. <laughs> they used to be my chainsaw milling headphones and now they're my sewing, sewing headphones. Block everything out, including the pterodactyls. Those are sandhill cranes, by the way. I always call them pterodactyls. They sound like flying dinosaurs to me. You can see why this would be easier if uh, I'd done this before I put it on here. You get corners like this, or it's doable, but it's kind of a pain. got. That's a pretty good fit. Covers like this that are nearly symmetrical, instead of putting it on every time, getting it sideways and turning around and everything, I like to sew a little uh, something of a different color on one edge, so probably Put it here also if the snaps aren't all in the same spot even if you got this upside down it would fit on here but the snaps won't be quite right so something like that ought to do with this side up marker now the only thing i wish i'd done i should have uh taped this seam it will get some water through there this stuff is incredibly uh water resistant like if you dump a bucket of water on it just beads up and rolls off for at least a couple years and then after that it still really won't soak through the fabric but I use this uh, seam stick tape it's a double stick double sided uh, sticky tape it's really good for stuff like this like when I folded the edges of this underneath I taped them so they stay in place and then I taped the whole thing down here before I sewed it on which I use on this stuff like this just to hold it in place so you don't have to pin it or anything but it also makes the seams uh, waterproof uh, this is now a waterproof seam, and that seam really should have taped it. It's not going to matter for quite a while, I guess, the way it is, but it wouldn't have been a bad idea. All right, let's throw some, uh, I think I'm just going to use regular snaps on this thing. That looks pretty good. Uh, before the weather turns, I'm gonna real quick uh, try to put a sew together a cover for my uh, Thermarest. You always hear me talking about my Mondo King. That's like the biggest Thermarest that uh, the biggest bed pad that Thermarest sells anyway. Got these old sheets of mine that are like the softest thing you can ever imagine. God, they feel so nice. <laughs> I'm so used to. Uh, working with like heavy canvas and stuff. Doing this stuff with real soft, supple fabrics is so hard for me. Like I just don't understand how people make clothes or anything like that. I would never even want to attempt it. It's like nothing's straight. When you use canvas and like umbrella and stuff like that, it's like folding cardboard. So it just like, you could put a crease in it and it'll stay just like that. And then you just stitch it like you were working with wood or metal or whatever. But this stuff is like, how do you draw a straight line on this? Thing wouldn't even lay out flat. Wow. Well, I guess it shouldn't surprise me. That's from a bed, and this is a bed, so I guess it should be the right size, huh? Wow, this is going to be gourmet. I never thought I'd come to a place in life where I thought something like this was gourmet. 
Then again, yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> Seriously, how are you supposed to get fabric like this straight, like flat? I guess maybe you're supposed to iron it or something? I find these uh, normal fabrics so hard to work with, I'm surprised we're not all wearing uh, canvas underpants. Hope I didn't just ruin my favorite set of sheets. Sure is handy having that uh, power block right there. I did this, I think I made a video before of uh, sewing out here. I can't remember what I was making, but uh, I had to run a generator the whole time, which was enough power to like power an entire house. I had to wear earplugs. This thing's great. See, so far I've used 12% of the battery on that thing. Also going from that, that that kind of sewing to this kind and this machine is this this makes me feel completely blind. <laughs> you thread a needle on an industrial machine, it's a hole like that, like you're sticking a rope through. And on here, uh can't even see the hole in the needle. This is this just isn't for me. Every, every now and then I have to stop for a minute. I get so used to being out here. It's just like, like you being inside your house or something. You just kind of get used to it. But <laughs> to think that I get to sit out here at a picnic table in the middle of the woods with nothing around and do some sewing is pretty magical. It's like beautiful day, almost no wind, winter coming on. And I'm sitting out here sewing with with no wall plugs and no running water or anything. And then when I'm done with this, I get to throw this on my thermarest and go sleep in a tent, which is what I like to do most anyway. It's pretty awesome. You guys uh, find this stuff interesting or like have never tried sewing before you can get one of these machines brand new for like a hundred bucks and as long as you're not sewing really heavy stuff they work great it's no frills a couple different stitches it does I mean I only ever use two I use a straight stitch or a zigzag that's it but I mean this stuff you know I don't know what most people think of uh, sewing is like maybe making clothes or something but the kind of stuff that you can make if you know how to use a really simple machines like I'm trying to think of all the stuff I just sewed today, or in the last two days, stuff out here like cover fur, my thermarest. I put uh, knife loops on two more pair of jeans, fixed a pocket that had a hole in it, sewed up a tent bag that had the, uh, the handle strap was torn off, fixed a gun holster that was tearing, fixed a uh, sheath for a big knife, had a hole in it where the knife had cut through, made a cover for the solar panels. I mean, it's like endless what you can do with a sewing machine. If you like tools, it's one you gotta have. Hey, that's not bad. I was just thinking I bought my first sewing machine, I think when I was in college. Bought my first motorcycle and fixed it up, painted it, all that, and uh, the seat was all torn up, so instead of spending like 100 or 150 bucks on a new seat for it, I spent the same amount of money, bought the leather, bought a sewing machine, learned how to sew on that, and I mean, it was a cheapo machine, had plastic gears in it and everything. I think I eventually did strip them out, but I sewed a lot of motorcycle seats and leather stuff with it. So like a hundred bucks, you can get a machine that works. You can make do. It's worth it, it's fun. Really pretty amazing fabric, huh? Look at this. I changed my mind. I was going to kind of Mickey Mouse this together with the old bed sheet and whatnot because 
This tent's been out here two summers now, and it's really getting sun bleached. That's actually the only reason the tarp is up there, to keep the sun off of it. I don't expect I'll get more than maybe one more summer out of this thing, so I didn't want to make a really nice cover in there and then just have to check it with the tent. I don't think you can buy this tent anymore, so that canvas that I use for the solar cover is like, I think maybe 30 or $35 a yard, and that was several yards, so I just didn't want to spend $100 to do this thing. But I dug through my bins, I found some light canvasy kind of stuff that'll work. So instead of making something junky, I think I'm gonna, I think uh, pe people watching might actually like to see how you do this. If you ever wanna make a cover for, cover for something, like sew a cover, a really nice one, I'll show you how to pattern it, what materials you use so you can get like a nice tight fit. So unfortunately to do this the right way, I gotta pull the cover off of there and uh, open everything up so I can get to what I need to. This is what I use for uh, patterning material. It's just plastic sheeting that's like fiber reinforced. I don't actually know what it's uh, made for, but you can find it online. You can use just regular sheet plastic. Like for this, it would work totally fine. You could actually use anything. You could use an old tarp and cut it up or whatever. But if you're trying to make a really nice cover that fits really tight on something, you want something that doesn't have any stretch because by the time you get it really tight and move it around a bunch of times, if you get even just a little spot where your thumb stretch the the uh, plastic then your entire cover won't fit quite right so this stuff's really nice to use for this so i'm just going to make two maybe three pieces of uh, fabric here i'm going to do one panel for this and then basically one panel here and i might just have it cut down the middle i think it's just going to hang fine i don't think i need any closures on that i also don't re really want this thing all closed up so the front panel is like going to come probably to these poles and you still see there's a hole here the fly goes right over top of it but since you know your respiration when you're sleeping and the water vapor from that heater condenses on everything really want, i really want it to be able to breathe so i'm just going to hold the heat in while i'm using that heater so if it comes to here that's fine or maybe i'll just put some velcro straps on there or something this part there's nothing to velcro to so uh I'll probably make the pattern go to right here and then maybe i'll put some I don't know, some pocket kind of things on the back of this that have something in it, like a little piece of, I don't know, you could put rocks or sand or a piece of pipe or whatever. Sandbags would probably be the best. You can make like long skinny sandbags and uh, fill a little long pocket that'll stay back there. And because the rain flies on top of it, it won't pull across that. But the way you uh, go about patterning this is just to put double-sided tape on any of the edges. So clearly the edge all the way around is gonna need it. And then this far is gonna need it. Anytime there's a bend in a panel, or a bend in the side of the tent or anything, you have to make a separate panel. So you can put the double stick tape on these. I like to do some painter's tape first because that this tape has a lot of grip. So if I tape all this, it might be really difficult to get it back off there. Now you could, and I might, if I were just doing this and not making a video of it, you could skip right over the patterning material and you could just use the fabric. So pull the backing off of this. You could stick the fabric on how you want it and then you trace the edges of it right along the top of the pole and work from that. The difficulty with that, if you just use the fabric, is you can really only like stick it on there once. As soon as you pull it back off, the tape doesn't have any more grab with uh, clear plastic. You can stick it on, you can move it around, get it exactly how you want it. And then you can write all over the plastic too. You know, write an arrow, add half an inch on here, or this is where a snap goes or whatever it is. And then you can transfer that onto the material you, you're using. It's nice if you want to get it nice and tight and smooth. This stuff you can just keep peeling off of here and stick it back on as many times as you want. This is pretty straightforward, easy panel, so it won't take too much. But look, even that looks pretty, pretty even. Since the tent's so flexible, I'm not really going to pull it too tight. If this was like 
you know, tubular steel, stainless steel, like on a boat or something like that, you could really just keep moving it around to get all these little wrinkles out. But clearly, if I try to get these wrinkles out by pulling this tighter, it's just going to flex the, t the whole tent. And then I'm going to make the other panel and sew it together. It's not going to fit right. Now all I'm going to do is take a permanent marker and, and you can run it right, right along that pole, the center of it. Since the other pole is too far underneath there, I'm just going to do as far down as I can. And then I'll just do a do an arrow so I know to continue it down to that spot right there. And then I'll probably, like I said, put some Velcro straps around this. And I just don't want them to end up right where those clips are. So I'm just going to mark there's the clip. So I'll just make sure to not stick them there. Probably put them in between each one. And then this doesn't need to touch the ground. We'll just have it, let's just say four inches. So I'll mark a whole bunch of these at four. And I'll put a straight edge on that later. Straighten that line up. Not sure if there's enough extra material here. Looks like probably not quite to do this piece. So I'm just gonna turn the whole thing a little bit and I'll go right over top of what I've got. I'm just gonna use the same piece just turn it and stick it back on here. Normally it helps to use a different color Sharpie. I don't have one out here, but we'll just overlay one on top of the other. connect the lines on the bottom. The best way to do this is to cut the whole thing out and then since I don't have fabric that's big enough to lay this whole front piece on one piece of fabric I'll uh, sew a couple of pieces of fabric together lay them on the table and then this cutout pattern I'll lay right on top of it and I can transfer the marks like where the clips are where I want velcro or whatever right onto the fabric cut that out and then sew it together but because I put one pattern on top of the other just to save patterning material. I don't know, I'll either not cut it all the way out or I'll cut it out and then just tape it back together with uh, packing tape. Like this line right here is the right side of the front panel and this is the top panel. They uh, intersect so I'll have to do something about that. I went ahead and did kind of a hybrid. So this is the front panel and it goes down here. I believe oh to right here and then back up and then this is the top panel that was on that I drew on the back side of this comes around to there so all I did instead of cutting this off and then sticking them back on I think I'm just gonna leave them like that and I can I'll put this on top of the fabric once I get it sewed together a big panel and I'll just draw the line right along the edge here and when I get to this spot I can either fold it back or just put my pencil underneath there and draw that line it's the stuff I found in my stash that wasn't a bright color anyway. I don't even know what size this is, but it looked like it was enough. <laughs> I was having trouble trying to lay this out on the table when the table's not big enough. I'm thinking, where could I possibly lay this out all the way? I got a gazebo, and there's nothing in there, and I haven't used it in a while because it's too cold. I'm going there to lay this stuff out. cool thing is, I actually don't have to sew pieces of fabric together first. I didn't think this uh, stuff was wide enough, but I can totally fit it on one piece. So I'm going to go around the edge, mark this, and then 
you know, clearly you don't want to just cut it when I hem the bottom under. So probably do like that and that, and then you don't have a rough edge that's going to come uh, unraveled. So the bottom, I don't know, I might actually do something more like this and leave like a two inch strip there just because I have enough fabric. Uh, the sides, yeah, I'll just do go under a half inch, then another half inch, stitch all that down. And then the top, this is where it's going to attach to the other panel. I'll just leave an extra, so I'll trace this line out and then go follow it along and just go an extra half inch out. And that's the for the seam. Well, it's happening yet again. There's no rain scheduled for today, and now it looks like the entire rest of the day it's going to rain. So, you guys wonder why I always give you the weather in these videos. It's such a big part of living out here. Like, living outside makes a big difference. A little bit of rain in the afternoon versus a sunny day. So, I'm going to put this stuff away. I guess go hang out in the tent and... Uh, Maybe read, work on some videos, and then try this again tomorrow. Be the fourth day in a row, I think. Ooh, 35 degrees. And uh, another supposed to be sunny day, and the rain's coming in, so gotta get this put together. I spend another day stuck in the tent without my fancy heat cover. Gotta get my sewing headphones. Can't sew without a book going. Holy crap, my feet are cold. I refuse to get my winter boots out or my uh, Carhartt bibs and jacket, even a jacket out until it snows. There's some stuff I got to prove to myself and this is how I do it. I'm not going to give in. I will freeze to death first. So I'm going to put a few Velcros along the side here. <laughs> Somehow I have probably a hundred feet of one side of Velcro, and this is all I have of the, uh, let's see, this is the loop side, the other side's the hook side. So I got a bunch of this soft stuff, I'm gonna make six of these, so I guess I'll just do them in six pieces. I'm gonna use this uh, double-sided tape on these two, it makes it a lot easier to put this on here. I guess a piece of stick ought to work well enough back in those pockets. Maybe something like that.
Well, hopefully those, uh, <laughs> hopefully my sticks will hold. That's the very top, so tuck those behind the poles. I think I'm going to need one more in the middle. I just cut a short one. I don't know how well that's going to stick back there. I guess I'll make another pocket. Just sew it on there, and then we'll try it out. All right, let's see if it fits. Get it done, I'm out. I was gonna say just in time, but about five minutes too late. I was sewing in the rain. I think this is gonna work just fine. I cut the, uh, the middle and put a little strip on here and a couple pieces of Velcro. I don't know that that's really necessary, but I mean, the cut is necessary to get in and out, but I don't know if the Velcro is. A little wrinkly but I think that worked out all right you can see like the heat will just barely get through here and the water vapor and stuff back into this part but it's blocked off quite a bit from back there that's cool the only thing I should have done before I ran from the rain is put a another oh look at this Sometimes stuff just really works out, doesn't it? It's actually not really enough room to get in here, but... That'll do! That's fantastic. Those uh, pieces of stick and those little pockets worked great up there. I mean... It's not going anywhere. Oh yeah. See it right there. That's perfect, though. Well, I guess if... Uh... <laughs> Look at this. Blue skies. Perfectly blue skies. And it's still drizzling. The weirdest thing. On and off all day. Well, if it drizzles again, I'm going in there turning the heat on. I'll let you know how it goes. Well, if you ever wonder where the videos are coming from, this is it. And it is, it's got to be at least 10 degrees, if not 15 degrees hotter in here. <laughs> It's kind of great. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow I'm going to get started on a, uh, a cabin of sorts right between the tent here and the picnic table. It's a little open spot. I have to take down some trees uh, around that area. I'm a little more cognizant now of taking down all the uh, problem trees in the area before I build something. So hopefully get the chainsaw out tomorrow, take down a few of those, and then uh, get the mill out, start milling up lumber. As always, not going to do any plans, not really going to do any thinking. I know something like 10 by 10, you know, clearly it's going to be made out of uh, cedar siding. I'll probably mill up. There are a couple of uh, giant dead pines around here, nearly dead pines. I'll take down, mill those up with a chainsaw, do that for the framing or something. I don't know. I think I have enough shingles left over to uh, put a roof on it. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I want a place that I can have a heater in like this when it's really cold in the winter winter and also i want to get the, some of my battery powered tools and stuff out of the lean-to because after a couple summers and uh, a couple winters of uh, my stuff sitting there so much stuff is getting ruined that was great i mean we put that that thing up in i mean the frame and the tarp was up in a day or two and then you know it took a few days to mill the lumber for the ends of it to close it in but it served its purpose now i need a replacement and hopefully i'll get started on that tomorrow so check back next week if you want to see uh <laughs> we'll figure out where we're building it start putting stuff together thanks for watching everyone